currently a lot of bodies built up on Catwalk right now. Wynn's right around the corner. And Baby Bay will be the first one to make contact. Oh, boy. And Wynn actually does great damage. He only gets two kills, but that follow-up headshot on that back-end target will result in a soft and easy kill for Gimon. Now, the two remaining have scooped up the SMG to work with. And they're now moving that spike up mid. All right, they heard that camera. And one thing that I found very interesting, too, for the Ares that was Revealing bought by Eddie. Player One, he was playing it from spawn site. So usually you see, as you said, very weird that it's on a Cypher. You tend to see it, as Sinatra coined it, uh, onto a Silva towards that B ramp. Uh, but they're actually using it on the rotation for Cypher instead. Maybe with the, with the recon dart, he could spam it from spawn side because it's usually smoked out. But still, as we had the last two players, they were spotted. The only information that they got. They still have a heavy crossfire with Wynn playing with the Blade Swarm just on the right side. And he's actually pushing it with it from the paranoia that came in from the tree side. One was playing towards Warren, and it was Baby Bay who does get the kill onto Sean. Individual play from the Cloud Burst for Win to move in to get the kill into Wine. The spike is down. Long range with another onto Rockus. Trade it out. It's a two versus two. Empress is forced to be popped out from Corey as well. And it's going to be a battle. Happening very soon on the game. Game on catches Corey off guard left. with the spike. It gets tumbled down just in front of the default spot. Zachary now has to come through the door. And Mikael has an angle that he's in position with the AWP. And after the peek comes through that takes out his camera, he realizes probably not worth it. But he's again advancing just a little bit further. And Baby Bay's got a line of sight on that one. And off the bat, Gen G not able to do too much. Sean did find one kill. Magazine runs dry for Marv, has to switch to the classic. It's a nice little 4K for Marv, some eco frag, sure, but that's the stats just <laughs> I can do with my Al drone except clear out mid. And it's clear. At least that lets them know that they can move up in the market with no fear. And there's the door going down. The Hunter's Fury being popped by the attacking side. It's Rockus from the boathouse and some good damage being dent, uh, dealt downrange. Now Sean's in spawn. There's the Tailwind to get out of there. Finally, the action picks up as they start to move their way out onto the site. Zachary from Cubby has found two. Sean trying to get into a better spot, but can't. And now these pulses coming out wow. from the Hunter's Fury reduces everything down to just one. Mikael was attached to spawn while sending out those bandom. But it's really up to the Cypher and the Sova on site. Left. <laughs> they were trying to deal with the tripwire. Couldn't quite get an angle on it. They end up baiting player one out of position anyway. So Mikael has to pop off here from backside site. Good thing shot coming out from the Phantom. A nice follow up as well. There's still two players moving into position. There's the ult being popped by Jet. The knives come out, but they're oh not connecting. Mikael's still alive. Now the spike has to be dedicated as there's only seven seconds left. And now they pulled him off of it and not much can be done. Well played by Gen G to get back into the site. But still though, I still believe that this is a strong half for FaZe Clan, and I like this from player one. He's not going to hit the camera, because as you don't spawn it, he could just let it know, and they use the Owl Drone on top of that too, so they think they're still going to focus on that. The camera's going to look back after. This allows Mikael to try to get a couple of tags. There's that first one of the Zachary, but cannot get the kill. Meanwhile, they have lost a player as Wynn was trying to get an off kill towards A main. Another one to fall as Corey was lurking towards Catwalk, so you have the attempt of a retake only on the players inside B, and it works out. Player one going with the classic burst. Rock is the fall, the spike has been dropped on the sidewalk. Corey forced once again to pop the Empress and try to clutch a three versus two with his teammate. Now moving inside the site, that camera that they never broke at the beginning of the round now spots the Omen Marv at the defender spawn too, so they know exactly where the last two players are coming down from. At the staircase, Marv is looking down. Empress coming back here from Sean. Corey onto that sidewalk, left. but that Empress is about to dissipate on the attacker side for phase. With 26 A seconds A left on the clock, they Blind still get A the openings. A A it's now turned into a one versus one where Corey gets the on the corner. Has to be careful. Get See if Baby Bay goes for the traditional Blind tailwind to dash in. Here comes the play. There's the dash in off the flash. It's a nice kill that comes out, but they don't know there's still one on short. Now, Careful. Baby Bay has made it too one far up. So Sean's position is meaningless. Ultimately taken out by Corey in the site because they allowed Baby Bay pass without really Spike knowing planted. what had happened due to the flash. Not much could be done. But from the way that they're positioned, where they really want to try to maybe rush and take control early towards this A sign, uh, it could be a, a very tough one, especially now with the one way you have one hiding towards Wine, and that's going to be Marv. 
I think they should give this up now. And as they're still pushing it, Baby Bay uses that one way to his advantage, but it gets quickly traded out by player one. Marv trying to push forward on a one versus one instead, and Huynh punishes him for that. That's two weapon upgrades, an open site, a weaker site, and if they decide to push if they want to, the thing is though, there's a smoke coming in from the attacker side to cover up the sliding door, and a nice shot from Huynh, dashing into the site. They're looking for the plant. Huynh with the dirty shot out of the Sheriff. That gives Gen G the opening they needed to get onto the site. Now they're just securing the plant. Spike Rockus planted. moving in, sliding across. Has the recon dart to give away positions. Wants to start spamming away with the LMG. And we'll start sending some shots down in that direction. But he's tucked now in the corner and his teammate has changed spots. Still though, Rockus is fighting his way out of this position. The Al drone to come through to try and spot out the remaining players' positions. Right. We'll pick one off with Dart down in hell and up uh, the spam. Somehow it wasn't where it needed to be. Corey has to peek out and finish him off. It's now Quinn who's found three on the round with the Sheriff. And Rockus is in sight with an unideal weapon. The trap wire to even go for a flank if they wanted to, but it seems as though the woman decides to fall back as they want to go for the pinch and pincer into A. It is a very quiet round. After the early damage that was dealt onto the Cypher, things have really slowed down and Oh, this calmed. is big. Yeah. But here is the play. They're going to be trying to go into this A site. Nice. Lear to push them out. That kind of sticks Baby Bay in a really awkward position. Now, Sean gets taken down almost immediately, and they're looking for the last target. They okay. can't find Win. Somehow wins. It's not, it's not in their makeup. They're like a breach. Their setup is to be a support. So. Correct. I don't want to necessarily put that emphasis out there. Corey with a great pickoff onto Quinn to slow down the push. Baby Bay with verticality from the top rope, but it's Sean through the okay. smoke to deck Baby Bay. Iman has picked up a kill as well. Now, uh, there's a dark cover down, and Corey's inside it. Sight's been lost, but this is still a two-on-three in favor Spike of FaZe. Planted. It's going to come down to Gimon, who's in a big yep. position. Has to find at least one. He can't leave the Cypher alone in sight. Player one cannot fight alone from sight. So the support has to come from this omen. Yeah, so much. And this is going to make it hard. <gasps> they don't oh, clear it. Shot oh, no, he shot it. If he didn't shoot it, oh. maybe that goes differently. Yeah. But he shot it thinking it was going to spin back. It's an understandable play. Now player one is really stuck in a very difficult scenario. And you can see exactly what's coming his direction. Flying in is the omen. Not much can be done. 11 rounds will go on the scoreboard for FaZe. You got to ask yourself what. So we will have Haven no matter what as that second map. Uh, and it could still be a toss-up for these two teams. We'll talk about that a little bit later as it's time to focus on this current round with Genji looking to work back towards the A side, but Baby Bay off in from the wine, connects and dashes away, goes with a second with his own cloudburst. And now as he's, as he's running away, he does have support from Marv, drop it in from heaven to get another kill. And he gets that second one. Crazy to think that they could do it. So there's the ult being popped by Baby Bay, a similar play to what we saw earlier from Skadoodle in the T1C9 series. Just aggressively pushing down mid and a couple of knives into no the way. belly of the omen. There oh you go. God. Finally, took him a bit of time, but Iman really couldn't do much. Got caught leaping as he goes around the corner. That's a follow up for player one, finds two. And the advantage that FaZe was hoping to find early with Baby Bay's ult has been taken away. You were just hoping that that kill was a little exactly bit more where immediate, are. where he had the upper gone. hand there with uh, Gimon jumping out. But player one is able to salvage that round, at least at the beginning for Gen G. So they're going to recuperate now towards the front B sign. The neural theft that was thrown out kind of gave some positions away where Gen G decides to work back towards that B main for a split second. They were able to open up the B side, but a rotation comes back from Marv and also from Zachary at the market, at the staircase, default spots, but they su still have a Sova. So if they dart out towards that tree, that could spot Marv. You already see it from the X-ray. He's aiming at the tree just in case it gets shot, but they're not using it. They're using Gwyn to creep instead. Left. He's going to have the first shot, but Marv answers back. The waffle crosshair does not pay off as Zachary answers one of his own, and they even it up on a two versus two. 20 seconds left on the clock. You still have one in the back of the site. That's Marv, the second of the round. Dashing out, going into his own smoke oh, oh, oh. as Miguel gets the kill, and it's going to be a Sova left. on Sova. Now he gets pinged out, the spray comes through, he will get the spike plant, and he does have a Hunter's Fury to work with. Rock is trying to move down, smoke dissipates, he gets the first shot, the first kill! And the only kill needed to put FaZe Clan 
on a 1-0 in this series over Genji with a 13-9. Can they hold? We've seen some of these force buys from Gen G before, and we saw them in the last map. They weren't as successful on Ascent. But here they've gained sight control. And we've got ourselves a four on four as kills come through as the spike touches Pager. The clock ticking down and time gonna be a problem for FaZe as they wait for that smoke to dissipate. There's three players around the corner. He actually moves away and kind of opens up his team. But it's still going to be a bonus round for Gen G with the Spectres that they have. And it's going to be another attempt of a split into C. And once again, it's going to be Huynh dashing into his own smoke. But they are ready for it this time. Corey and Marv dropping two. Player one looking to clutch. But Baby Bay flies into the air and just planes a little bit. We take towards the A side to win Spike a one planted. versus one in the end and force Phase Clan on an eco. Nade around the corner. That was a good heads up play coming in from FaZe. Unfortunately, Iman's a little bit further back. But Tech W is in the chat. He's got 69 HP. FaZe now trying to come back into the site. And it's down to just one player strike. And this time, Gen G just creeping up. This is going to surprise Marv. Easy kill, maybe? It's a one way that comes out. Yes, the kill still comes through, but Win is at 30 HP. Thankfully, though, they are able to open up onto Zachary in the back of the side as well. As you try to rotate on the defenders, it's going to be a slow rotate. You still have a lurk towards mid. Now, as he gets spotted, it's still going to be Mikael. Although, this is that. They're putting most of the stack in the extremities on uh, the defense on the extremities. And also because of that, they're able to quickly push down towards Garage and get the backstab. So you don't even get a spike plant. But GMD pushes towards A Link. Mikaela back on the flank Player to get the headshot on tomorrow. A second onto Zachary. A two versus one. Rockus, the last man standing, has two shock darts. Here's the omen teleport, but he has control of the spike. Oh my god. He just came back from the shadows and almost got picked by Rockus. But Gimo was able to fall back. They have a Hunter's Fury too. And they might even wait for the, the I was gonna say, they might wait for the recon dart to come out. He already has it ready. And as it pings, it's not on the left side. They could think that it's on the right. A little bit of an individual play. They don't set up for the trade, so it could still be very winnable here for Rockus. 30 seconds left. Gimo just on the other side at the B cubby. 26 left on the clock. Looks like we will surrender the spike and allow GMD to try to go for a spike plant. And maybe you could catch him with the time remaining. Oh no, the barrel's sticking out. But GMD still gets the kill. The reaction time. Turning it across to get the kill onto Rock. Here where Marv wants to get aggro. And oh, that dark cover couldn't have come at a better time. Did he get past it? Yes, he did. But spotted out after getting that first kill. There's just too many players on the other side of that one. So the aggressive play almost worked out. And they're trying it elsewhere as well. You can see they've pushed down mid too. So they have players pushed down mid. Players pushing down C. They still haven't dealt with Raze, who's exactly pushed all the way down mid. Neural Theft going to give away the position, so now they know what's up. The C site is mostly empty. There's just one player in Garage that they have to deal with. That's Rockus, who actually puts a nice shock dart down, but takes significant damage just trying to do that. It's a four on three as the spike goes down. Rockus sends his Al drone through dark cover. Nade to come out as well. They're in a great post plant position too. I, I like the fact that they're just really pressed up towards the site now for Gen G on the crossfire. I know it's only against Ecos, but this definitely uh, sets up for these crossfires for the trades instead of trying to play the spike, especially when it's not really planted for long. You have Gimon that's going to watch the flank and they're just going to try to run that clock down. You're trying to do that Econ damage, but Win is the one that's tallying up the ult points by getting two kills and getting the blade storm ready for the next round. Corey gets nice two of them for, uh, on, for his efforts. And that's going to make it a little bit more pricey for Genji. But like I said, because he had the Blade Storm ready, oh, I, I like this. It's okay. He They're going to be moving over to C, and the spike's going to be planted in a second here. There was no one really playing defense. Super passive currently on the C site. Spike planted. Playing Intel based. What does this raise in mid get going for them, though? You can see Corey is sitting on the back line of the play. So Corey will get one, traded out immediately by Huynh. Could have had a chance to spot the players crossing from B as well, but decided to go back after hearing the footsteps coming through from A long. See if that ends up affecting things or not. 
they've upgraded and picked up a rifle now. It's some extra firepower to work with, and it's in the hands of Wynn. That's a player you want to have it. Smoke's coming out from Wynn as well as he dashes out onto the site with the Tailwind. Gets caught off guard by the position of the player right around the corner, but Gen G wow. is making okay. it happen, and just like that, Gen G gets back into the round, and they've got ample time for the defuse. This is exactly what we said. You can't count them out. And FaZe Clan in a tight spot. Trying to get an entry towards the sewers as they're stuck on an eco, but Gen G are looking to run away with this second map. Gen G, player advantage. Phase. They don't really have a ton to work with, but they've got some. I saw a vandal. Yeah, one player on a pistol. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That dart into the belly of this target waiting around the corner. Let's make things interesting as Mikael is forced to eat that shock dart that lands right on top of him. The blast pack comes in too and he's staring down at it. I like the timing <laughs> on the peak from Marv, just understanding that he's going to be trying to take care of that so he doesn't take that damage. Being low on HP, he had to. No other choice. The scrappy nature of the round continues to illustrate itself as we end up on this A site. 1v2, Corey with a dink shot come over. Now, Corey's going to get spotted by this cam if he gets out too far. There's the peak. And there's the dart delivery. And off that, Corey decides to back off, pull the dart out, but the rest of the team is still moving, left. advancing in this position. They've got 30 seconds to get on the site as a dark cover comes through from heaven. There's a player in heaven, a player in hell, and one right around the corner in spawn. Now, Marv just takes care of player one without really too much effort. Okay. And just like that, phase make it onto the site. They make it look easy, in fact. Mikael, the last player standing, wondering how this happened so quickly. And it was really mostly Marv's handiwork with the rifle to get them in. Does have a bit to work with. Recon dart, two shock darts, op shot miss. Very unusual here from Baby Bay, especially from the position that he had. And there you go, that's big advantage, big information. That's going to force one out, but the second thing is the unknown towards Graffiti. Second one lands in. Now they know that he's pushed towards the spawn. He checks the 50, oh. and it's going to be Corey that gets it. That's tough. One to try and find that it's magical so good. number 12. Sorry, I, I just want to point this out. Because the Hunter's Fury came out and it didn't ping anybody, Gen G thinks that since there's no pressure towards the A side, it's an open site. But Corey actually uh, sneaked his way through and he's on a big really lurk good. position. So now he's already at defender spawn. They're rotating back towards A. Oh no, but Mikael gets the kill. And that could be another tell to say, okay, let's rotate back. Let's run the defense, especially after this plant. Planted. But it looked beautiful to start things off what on paper for FaZe. Uh, they, 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 they sold it pretty much for Genji. Genji technically played themselves. After that ult, thinking that no pressure on A side means they're going to push for D or C. They rotated players out, another player retake. A good neural theft to try and cut this push in half. Does it at least land on one pulse? The recon dart's gonna go high up into the sky to try and spot these players out. A pulse will come through that gives Alay at least one player's position, but Gen G is moving in fast to try to get onto the site. Wynn's got oh, the knives out, he's found one. Baby Bay gets around the corner, but it all comes down to this. It's Marv, who's inside spawn, but it doesn't matter, the spike's been stuck. He was too far away from the play. Start mid control. But Sean is looking for that selfish play. Off angle in the front, could dismiss away. He gets the first kill. Bladesworn trying to push forward, trying to trade it back. And there you go, he clicks out, but does not connect. We may be looking at a third map here, Buck. I mean, we felt like we were going to end up there. Base. their fans were hoping otherwise. Because it gets a little Josh. scary when you go to that third map. Barb trying to keep this one alive, but taken out as he goes for some of that utility. He's getting ready to send out a dark cover. Zachary has snuck onto the site, but there's one immediately to the left, and the barrel shines Defenders through. Gen After a hectic push inside the site, yes, we had two players fly inside the site. That was Sean and also Win. Win gets executed by Corey because his teammates couldn't cover on that first kill, doubling up on that elbow. So that's a lot of position and information given away. Three players from phase pushing in towards that elbow too, leaving Mikael on his own. Somehow this retake has been beautiful. He gets the headshot onto Corey though. That clock is diffusing now. Gets a second kill out of bullets. He's rotating back. He's reloading, and he couldn't get the kill. That's speaking about Marv, an omen versus omen. A shadow step. Rockets gets the kill. Sorry, I thought it was going to be Marv, but it's Rockets. I forgot about that change. 
and he still gets the take with the run it back from Marv. Spike it immediately planted. gets cancelled. So this allows now Genji to have a great position. But the thing is, I'm talking about great position. They don't really have it. They're all stuck on the elbow. So it really has to come out to Mikael to really try to split that defense around as he's fighting towards that back. And as he shadow steps across, he gets picked off by Zachary. They're in a tough spot right now. This could still be retakeable for FaZe Clan as they did so on that pistol. And Wynn is able to trade it out first. But back on the backstab, Marv gets one. It's a two versus two. They think there's one behind the map. But they're playing that clock. Pre-fire shot from Sean. Hot hands allows them to push forward. Wynn gets the second kill. And one more to go as they know that he's close. The dash through. That clock is ticking down. Wynn is just playing that clock. They're going to get it. Well done here on that one versus one. An expensive round. Especially on top of that. Cover going down. Uh, last player remaining. remaining. Oh boy. My eyes are back. Page three. Okay. That could work too. Continue with the right clicks. Player one making it expensive. I mean, he's not going to win the round. But those are definitely frustrating. Uh, frustrating debate is towards long A so they can really focus towards B. The attack is soon coming. And they have player playing towards Hell, and that's Marvin Zachary. Beautiful crossfire from Hell and also entrance. And now can they actually get it done? Sean's going to be the last one standing. He gets executed from the rotate from the A side, courtesy of Rockus. That's where Rockus is currently positioned, getting ready to toss that paranoia and dark cover out. There's the paranoia. Dark cover came first. Showstopper's been popped by Baby Bay. Wants to send a rocket down into that, and it's exactly where it needs to be. Heard to reload. Really? Haven't been able to get onto the site necessarily yet, but Iman's been able to sneak out into a position they didn't expect. Left. Flash comes through, looking for that other player on site, and they find it, but they need to get that spike down, and they do. It's down to a two-on-two, two, and they have Rolling Thunder. That could be massively influential, depending on how they decide to use it. But Zachary also oh, has his ult. Lockdown could be a problem. So there's that rolling thunder towards spawn. Zachary gets bopped out of position. But in the meantime, Corey's wrapped around ramp and catches wind looking the wrong way. Yimon has too many angles to try to clear. And there's the ult oh, coming no. through. And as the smoke goes down, you know, Yimon was in a risky position. Not really much good cage. And player wants camera's going to spot everything they need. Oh, that, that actually hits up being brutal. The paranoia blinds him, and he can't take out the tripwire. So he gets stuck in it for a little while longer. Another second, and he would have been dazed. Now, that's a nice shot coming in from Rockus to at least try to get out onto this A site. But Sean is there. Popped up here by uh, Marv to try to peek. So this could be big. There you go. That kill. Now dashing in. He whisks the second one, unfortunately, but still manages to escape. Pulls out the knives. A second kill. That's good enough. A four on three. Moving in as Corey opens up for two. Thanks to the Empress, goes for the spike plant. B site is now open. Retake attempt. Successful so far up towards the mail. But GMD survives with 5 HP. On a 3 versus 3 with a turret, can do a lot of damage. GMD makes it a 2 versus 1. The spike has been planted as Zachary pushing towards spawn. And there you go, that's huge. But there you go. Thankfully, I was going to say the turret could kill him. It came down to that Zachary versus, versus Sean around the corner. Execution should we do. And it's now going to be just one big explosive one inside B. Where Rockus from the shadows comes out and gets the kill onto Mikael. We're trying to push through, but the cyber cages are up. They're smoked all across the board. But Baby Bay, then player one gets a triple kill. Zachary now staying alive on a two versus one. 30 seconds left 30 on the clock. Seconds left. A peak coming through the timing once again. And it's going to be Genji. Sean, a second time on a timing. That comes into play for heaven. But win. Already at the heaven side with Sean. Two satchel charges available. But they had the verticality. The thing is, they don't have the angles from where FaZe Clan is playing. So even FaZe is actually pushing out like a Cory playing just under the window. He's going to spot ahead remains. very soon. Punishes it, uh, punishes, sorry, win for that. And is one frag away from making this a tight game. But Sean on a two versus one. He does get the satchel charge. The paint shells out. The tap forcing his opponent out. But that pushes them oh. out as well. That's it. It is going to be map and series point for phase. Crafton goes back towards elbow. It's actually going to be Sean who flies in, but the rocket doesn't connect. Doesn't matter. Oh. Sean's got some intense mobility. Zachary from inside heaven has to try and stop this defuse, but there's just too many targets out there. Gen G, they stay alive. Double digit rounds on the board. This is going to be interesting to see, to say the least. There's the Leer to lead them in. The smokes come down. The big play player on this is going to be that Breach, who's currently lurking on the ramp. They need that play to come through quickly. There's Gimon. 
Spike Taking planted. out, executing Marv. Now he's got some utility to utilize. Flashpoint sent out first. Aftershock comes through as well. Has the fault line available. Wants to send that one towards the site so they can try to get out from screen. Where now both players are coming through. You've got Sean and player one both in those positions. The days come through and it delivers. Ooh, they found two. It's now down to one. It's Ruckus on the site in the 1v2. He's trying to escape, going inside his own no. smoke, but no, it gets swapped the HP. Oh, they line up, but it doesn't matter. We are going to overtime. Oh my god, I, I I saw it. He wants to put the smoke up, trying to waste the time, but you know he's he's a three-man crossfire for face clan inside the A. As they drop down, player one gets dropped down. Warren rushes up for the cloud burst, and they're holding their ground on A, leaving Sean the last man standing with only 10 left. seconds left on the clock. This is looking to be a phase round. The first kill to come through, but that's it. The time has run out. Showstopper is even not enough. And we are player one has the cam there, but it's playing A heaven. And that's a big kill from Mikael. Spotting out that first player, that starts to pull the rays around. Seconds so left. now they're gonna have additional firepower here coming in by way of Sean. Mikael throws down another dark cover, but a quick shot coming out from Zachary onto Mikael. And now there's a ton of pressure on Gimon yet again inside the site. Only gonna get one this time around. Player one's on the balcony. The spike's gonna get planted with 15 seconds left on the clock. They make it onto the site. It's retake time yet again for Gen G. And we have to wait so long here for Win to rotate back. They really don't have anything for retakes with maybe if they still have pain shells from Sean. On the other end though, Zachary's on the corner. The turret gives a lot and that's a big tell. The pain shells are out and he does get the train off courtesy of Win to a two versus two. Marv is looking down. A crossfire setup as he gets the headshot onto player one. Can Win now clutches that full HP. Gets the first one to cloud burst as he dashes in. The curveball to come through. The smoke to come out. The spray from Marv and the victory for